Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the La Lita Loca Cruise Podcast. And man, uh, exciting show today. Let me just say that there are a few really big names when it comes to creating cruising content, and Life Well Cruised is one of them. So excited to get the opportunity to talk to Alana from Life Well Cruised, and we talk about a lot of stuff. Um, I won't even spoil it for you. Let's just get to the conversation. This is Alana from Life Well Cruised. <music> Well, I am super excited to be able to talk with Alana from Life Well Cruise, not only the website, but the YouTube channel. I was thinking today what my Mount Rushmore of cruise tip content creators are. And of course, you got, you know, Gary Benbridge and Cruise Tips TV and then you. And I don't even know who would be Abe Lincoln in that scenario. But there you are on the <laughs> Mount Rushmore. So I'm so excited to talk to you. And this is really the first time that we've ever talked. So I'm excited about that because I get to ask all those questions and it's all new information for me. So let's start as if we're writing a comic book. What is your cruising origin story? How did you become a cruising superhero? Okay, well, firstly, thank you so much for having me here. I am super excited to meet you too and to be here. But how we started cruising was uh, my husband and I booked a 10th anniversary cruise like 20 years ago. And it was something we thought we would do once. It was like, you know, I don't know, people that we knew didn't go on cruises all the time. So uh, we booked our um, anniversary cruise. Needless to say, we absolutely loved it, despite the fact that things that could go wrong that we tell people about, they really did happen. Our cruise was actually, uh, we booked our cruise during hurricane season. And um, right after we booked our cruise, my parents and my husband's parents and even some friends were like, are you sure September is a really good idea? We're like, yeah. The travel agent said if there is a hurricane somewhere that the cruise will just go somewhere else. So instead of Jamaica, maybe you'll go to St. Martin, etc. So we're like, oh, we were okay with that. We hadn't traveled to the Caribbean that much. So that worked out. But what ended up happening was there was a hurricane that was hovering over Florida, like Miami, that South Florida area. So our cruise was actually delayed. So um, mm. the cruise before us couldn't come in uh, for when our cruise was going to start. So that cruise went from seven days to nine days and those people had to stay out at sea and that kind of thing. And our cruise became a five day cruise, but uh, mm. the cruise line offered us the chance to either take a reimbursement or to go on the cruise with a $500 onboard credit and an offer for 50% off a future cruise that we took within a year. We absolutely wanted that vacation, so we went on it, and of course, the rest was history. We were hooked. That's amazing. Uh, we had a very similar scenario. Our first cruise, the engine broke on the cruise ship. We never even oh left when we were supposed to leave. And our cruise that was supposed to go to Cozumel became a cruise to nowhere. And it was horrible. Like that part of it was horrible. <laughs> and so that's what I wonder. Like I know several people that have this kind of story. I wonder if it's just the fact that our cruise experience started so poorly, but we still had an amazing time on it. I think that's probably why I love cruising because even though we had those challenges, we were completely hooked after the first cruise. Uh, it, it leads me to this next question. What are the things that you like about cruising? What do you think actually hooked you for cruising? And why do you maybe prefer cruising over, say, a land-based vacation? So I do think it is the ocean. Like, I know that the moment that I was hooked, and it was almost a moment, it was sail away. I looked at the shore, and it felt like physically all of the stresses that we had from every day. We had two kids. Uh, you know, both of us, our jobs, etc. And it was like, we just truly felt like we were on vacation in that moment. And you almost felt like leaving the shore to the adventures ahead. Uh, so to me, it was absolutely that. And beyond that, the entertainment, that is just phenomenal on a cruise and the choice to do anything you want. There are days that we, or evenings, we go to shows and there are other times that we sit, you know, at a bar and we never have to think about where we really want to go beyond just should we go to this bar or that show or this restaurant. It's uncomplicated in a way, but yet there's still so many choices. Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, the thing that I really like about cruising, and it sounds like you're along these same lines, is the fact that you can go with your significant other, you can go with your kids, and everybody doesn't have to do the same thing all the time. So much about land vacation is this argument over what we're going to do next, and cruising certainly offers a, a ton of variety. Because of those things that you like about cruising, which cruise lines do you gravitate to? Which one was your first one on, and then what's been your evolution of going on cruise brands? Sure, so our first cruise was on Royal Caribbean and we stuck with them for the next four cruises. We really liked Royal Caribbean and there's nothing wrong with them, they're great, but our kids were young. And uh, then we had an opportunity to sail with Princess and I wasn't even sure would my kids like Princess as much as they liked Royal Caribbean, but they did, they absolutely loved it. And then we sailed between Royal Caribbean and Princess until we added Norwegian. Uh, we tried one Carnival. We sort of um, moved around a little bit. And now, you know, it's 20 years later since we took our first cruise these days, and I wouldn't rule any cruise line out, but these days what sort of suits us most is Princess, uh, Holland America, Celebrity. I'm definitely open to other brands. Norwegian, we love the entertainment and even that freestyle feeling, it is really fun. And we just did Royal Caribbean. We liked it too. Oh gosh, I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Yeah, those, there's there's definitely <laughs> worse problems to have, and that you know I do like the fact about cruising that you know I, I believe in loyalty. I, I like you know you know I believe that it's good to grind out loyalty with a brand. But the nice thing about cruising is there is such a variety that you can pick and choose and try a bunch of different things to to figure out what you like. Twenty years of cruising, that's amazing. I, I've only been cruising for maybe oh, seven years. I guess I'm coming up on seven years. I'm late to the game, but in those twenty years, what what are some of the highlight places you've gone to visit or some of the highlight cruises uh, are you a ship person or a location person a port person uh, where, where do you fall in those spaces so I am really a bit of both um, I think when it comes to the Caribbean because we started off with the Caribbean um, we did a lot of that so now when I'm in the Caribbean I don't want to say that I don't enjoy the ports I absolutely do but I take the opportunity a little bit more to stay on the cruise ship when we're in ports that we've repeated a few times. And like you said, that's kind of the problem of cruising a lot. So <laughs> not, not a bad thing. But um, we loved, like we've done two Mediterranean cruises now and uh, absolutely loved it. I would really love every destination. I think it's the combination of how beautiful everything is and the amazing food. We are kind of foodies a little bit. So, um, so that, and uh, we loved Alaska too. That really surprised me how beautiful, how the air was like smelled so fresh, um, loved it. Awesome. Are there still some spots on your bucket list that you haven't gone to that you're eyeing for your future cruises? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think we would like to go to Norway to um, the Norwegian fjords. That would be interesting. I'd really like to do British Isles. I think you did that last year, didn't you? Yeah, it, yeah. I, I can't recommend that enough. It was it was quite the experience. Yeah, so that's something that I would really like to do. I think I'd like to go back to the Mediterranean again, ideally to um, Couture Montenegro. That's been uh, a location. I don't know why, but I've seen the sail in to Couture, and that's something I'd like to do. I'd like to be able to get a chance maybe to go to Venice, so do a little bit more Italy, a little bit more Greece. I like that region of the Mediterranean, and um, so ideally, hopefully, Holy Land in the future, so hopefully things will you know, take a turn in a better direction at some point. I'd love to go there. Yeah, Holy Land was high on my bucket list. I'd actually booked the Holland America cruise that was leaving Florida, doing the whole med, including Israel, and then coming back. So essentially, you get to do the med without flying, plus that included the Holy Land. But once everything kind oh, of went sideways one. this year, we, we let that cruise go, unfortunately. But we are going to the Mediterranean for the first time late next month. So we're going to take a transatlantic to Barcelona. Then we're going to do an MSC cruise around the med. Then we're going to take a transatlantic back. So I'm very excited wow. that uh, it's going to be uh, Jenny, it's my, my wife's first time, to get over there to the to Europe at all. So very excited about that trip. Now, you mentioned that you're foodies. And so I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, and this is an interesting question to me. I, I do like Princess, I like Celebrity, I like Holland America line, and I like them from a food perspective. So just uh, I'll, I'll hit you with these. Of those three, which do you think offers the best buffet? 
Okay, so out of Princess, Celebrity, and Holland America? Yes. Okay, so based on recent cruises, I would say it is a tie for me between Holland America and Celebrity on their newer ships. So like the Edge class ships, I think that the buffet on Celebrity is fantastic. And uh, Holland America, I love their presentation and I love the taste of their food. I really do like it. And I like the um, the self-serve buffet. Uh, not the self-serve, the, the full-serve buffet that Holland America has. Yeah, I am. Um... Gosh, I didn't even think I would care about it. And then last year I was on the Rotterdam, like you said, a new Holland America ship. And then I've also been on the Edge and the Apex. And yeah, Celebrity, you know, the fact that they have, you know, a grill station where they'll grill protein for you. But something something about that Holland buffet, and maybe it was because I was on that ship for 20 days, but I, I really enjoyed that buffet. And then taking it one step further, do you see much difference between those three main dining room experiences on Holland Princess and Celebrity? Um, I think that they're all good, but I think they're all evolving. Like, how did you find it on with food recently and um, and the main dining room? And I don't know that this counts. I think one of my favorite main dining room experiences is actually not really a main dining room experience. But one time we got upgraded to a spa cabin on Celebrity. It was the Celebrity uh-huh. Equinox, which includes their own restaurant, the Blue Restaurant. Yes. That restaurant, which it still kind of sneaks into the main dining room vibe. Uh, I really enjoyed that restaurant. But um, I think overall, I really enjoyed Holland's main dining room, maybe even more so. I think it edged out both Celebrity and Princess for me. Yeah, I have heard um, that Blue is phenomenal. I'd like to be able to get a chance to try that sometime. We did um, recently, when we were on Holland America, we decided to get Club Orange. We weren't in a suite. Uh, but, you know, you can purchase Club Orange as a little bit of an upcharge. So we decided to do that, and we were on Rotterdam. So you have that separate sort of dining room space to eat in, and there is um, one meal, at least one dish that's prepared specially within the Club Orange area that you could, you know, eat, and it's a little bit different. And we just found the service was so good, the food was so good. So that was definitely excellent. Mm. Now I'm getting hungry. It's uh, it's, it's interesting, <laughs> and plus, I, I, my my mind wanders a little bit. I, you know, let's talk about this. You know, you mentioned kind of specialty and even sweet areas on cruise ships. We see many of these lines like Princess and Celebrity, Holland, with their ship MSC, with their ship inside of a ship, sweet experience, other type experience, elevated experience. I've seen some people push back about, you know, against that. I've seen people embrace it. What do you think? Do you think the offering that kind of ship within a ship experience, do you think it's uh, good for cruising? Do you think it's not good for cruising? It's certainly good for the cruise lines. They're able to offer a nicer (laughs) experience and make a little more money. But uh, how do you feel about it? Does it bother you or does does it not affect you either way? Uh, So, no, it doesn't bother me. The only thing I would say is what I don't want to see is cruise lines taking away public space that exists already to bring that to, you know, uh, an exclusive area. Because I do think that cruise ships, especially now, they are crowded. I have noticed the difference and I think it's okay. It's great for the cruise lines, like you said, that they're selling out their cruise ships and they're at capacity, sometimes more than capacity. But I do think there needs to be enough public space for, you know, regular cruisers that they still really enjoy, you know, that cruise life. A couple of things I've been doing is I'll go to like the door of the Haven or something when I'm not a part of it and I'll just stare at the people. I mean, it makes them feel <laughs> awkward, but I feel like I feel like I paid at least for that. Like outside the door I can I'm kidding. I don't do that. But um <laughs> I don't know. It's a wild thing. It doesn't bother me. The wildest thing that I encounter is sometimes, and I'm sure you're you're having this on cruise ships now, you'll meet folks and you'll meet people and they're like, hey, I'm staying in the suite area. Would you like to come see my suite? And I'm like, no, I, I don't think I want that until I can actually stay in it. I don't, I don't want to go see how the other half is living, but uh, no, it's, it's a wild thing. So again, I, I mentioned it earlier to me, you know, you provide some of the best cruise tips on YouTube and uh, I'm very thankful for it. I know that I've repacked a bag after watching uh, one of your videos before. <laughs> so let's talk about cruise tips. What are a couple cruise tips that you think every cruiser should know? Like fundamentally, what are the, what are the things that, that, that people should know? Okay. Well, firstly, 
And I think um, a lot of people who watch these videos, whether they're yours or mine, they probably know this at this point, but for people that are new, to fly in one day before. Oh. And of course, it doesn't say that when you book a cruise, especially directly on the website, you know, you're not dealing with a travel agent perhaps, and nobody tells you it's a good idea to fly in the day before. It's not like an all-inclusive resort. You know, it's not gonna wait for you. So definitely, so many people are disappointed when they rush on the day of the cruise to get there. And even if they do make it, that first day is just, you know, they don't have peace of mind. So that's definitely the first tip. Uh, tip number two is I swear by magnets. Um, mm. For people to bring magnet hooks, uh, it just adds extra vertical space to your cabin. You can, you know, add an extra two, three, four magnet hooks. And I buy these strong ones. They are, I think, even 100 pounds. So this way we can hang backpacks up. I hang my beach bag up and I keep in my beach bag, I'll keep um, my sunscreen, aloe vera, any of the different things that I need. If it's a book, sometimes I'll even pre-pack it with towels and I'll hang it up and it's ready for me the next day. Um, I keep one magnet hook near the door so I can have my lanyard there with my key card because I swear I used to lose my key card all the time. <laughs> so even though I don't think lanyards are the prettiest, they're very functional for me. So, um, so I use them. Yeah. So Magnus is, a, I tell you what, I've been watching, uh, I've been keeping up a little bit with the ultimate world cruise Royal Caribbean serenade of the seas. And there's a couple content creators out there living phase two, I believe that's what they're called. Uh -huh. And I watched them bring, they brought nine months worth of stuff. Like if you get a chance and you haven't seen it, watch their first video on that ship because they brought nine months worth of stuff into this balcony cabin. But one thing that it was almost an instant buy for me is they had spice rack magnet, magnet magnetic spice racks. I don't know if you've seen this or not, no, but it, it's I'm like, it looks it like a, yeah, it looks like a single spice rack, you know, but it's metal because I bought them. They're very heavy. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really want to carry these around for just a casual cruise. <laughs> but they're probably like, I don't know, they're probably a foot or I don't know, maybe 14 or 15 inches long, the width of a spice bottle, but full on magnet that would go right against the wall. It, it looks... I haven't taken it on a cruise yet because, like I said, they feel heavy. But um, it's amazing. It's amazing the amount of stuff that they got in that cabin for. I'm not that organized. So it was. I was amazed watching how much stuff they had in there. Uh, the, I think those are great tips for first-time cruisers. And then, of course, I know there's a lot of people out there that have cruised for a long time. Is there anything that you've come across that you find seasoned cruisers maybe need a reminder of or a tip that sometimes we might forget? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, seasoned cruisers should go on a cruise ship with the eyes of a first-time cruiser. And I say that only because there have been a lot of changes, and it's normal. There have been a lot of changes, even, you know, I think the pandemic definitely uh, created a lot of changes in a very short time period that is difficult to adjust to. Uh, but there have always been changes, and I do think that seasoned cruisers, if we're going to have the very best time on a cruise, I think we have to um, see the world a little bit through rose-colored glasses, at least during the time of our vacation. We could complain before, we could complain after, but not on the cruise. No, nah, it's, it's, it's great <laughs> advice. It, you know, uh, I, I'm going to hit you with more, one more rapid fire, yeah. but then I do want to talk about how cruising has changed since the shutdown. Uh, packing cubes, where, where, where do you stand on packing cubes? I am absolutely pro packing cube um, for organization. So I don't necessarily think, although I do think that I fit a little bit more in a packing cube, I really squish it in there. Um, but for me, it's the organization and my family, too. Like my now both of my sons swear by packing cubes. My husband, everybody has a different color. So I think they're great. I am not necessarily pro compression packing cube. I feel mm. like that just squishes things up more. I like the shape of a regular packing cube with the mesh on top. And then what we do is we'll take our packing cube filled with, you know, items. And oftentimes I'll keep things in there unless they have to be hung up. I also like to hang up things because mm. I don't like wrinkled clothing if I can help it. Do you have a good solution for wrinkled clothing? Are you, are you bringing anything or using the cruise ship's pressing service or finding a laundrette? 
so usually I do bring downy wrinkle releaser. I do find it works. I know people say sometimes it doesn't, but as long as my clothes were pressed before going on the cruise or if, you know, sometimes some fabric just doesn't wrinkle that much, which is good. But so I use a downy wrinkle release. I spritz my items and then you do have to have this little technique of pulling it down, pulling it out, pulling it down, pulling it out. Sometimes I steam it. Anyway, it goes through a little bit of a process, <laughs> but and I have used the pressing service. Like if it's formal nightwear and for instance, my husband and son usually bring a suit and a dress shirt that sometimes if we're flying, maybe clothes is in um, the luggage for a couple of days. If it's wrinkled, you know what? I'll spring for the eight bucks and I'll just get the items pressed. It's just easier. Yeah, no, no, I agree. It's uh, it's one of those, I even experienced it just on this two day cruise that I was on. It's like, oh, a lot of my stuff's wrinkled. I only got like four <laughs> outfits and it's all, it's all wrinkled, but you know, there was a pre you know, laundrette there and a pressing service, but uh, yeah, it, interesting stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll close up the packing uh, section here. Do you unpack on embarkation day or how long, how long does it, how long does it go before it starts to bother you that your clothes aren't unpacked? Oh, I unpack, uh, I used to unpack before mustard drill. Uh, but now I just make sure I'm always unpacked before dinner. So I might have unpacked a little bit in the afternoon and a little more before dinner. It doesn't take us that much time to unpack, but we do it quickly. I want to feel like I'm at home. It's funny, in a hotel, I don't really unpack. I hang up whatever I need to, but I don't really unpack. I live out of a suitcase, even if I'm there for a couple of weeks. But, uh, well, a couple of weeks, that might be a little long in a hotel, but a week. But uh, on a cruise, I want to feel like they're just never going to kick me off, you know, which doesn't yeah, happen. No, but... <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, even on that short cruise, I, you know, I, I used to not be so uh, intense about getting my bag unpacked. But even on this short cruise, I'm like, well, it's only going to take five minutes to unpack. And to your point... I love the feeling of this is my space, you know, even though if yeah. I'm only going to be there for a couple of days or a week, uh, you know, it's nice to know that your stuff has a place and, you know, you're not looking at your suitcase. So that's pretty wild. But OK, you mentioned it, that uh, cruising is a little bit different now than it was before the pandemic. Uh, let's land on that for a little bit. How do you think cruising is different now than it was prior to the shutdown? So definitely, I think um, there have been some changes in service. That is personally where I notice it. And also food, although I think that that, based on my own experience, I think that food is evolving in a better way right now. Uh, so just tackling the food, I had found that coming back after the pandemic, um, that there was a change in the food menus, to a certain extent, the food presentation, and even the food quality. And I loved cruise food before in the main dining room in particular. And that's where I found that sometimes there were less offerings on the menus uh, in the main dining room or some of the items weren't available. And sort of, you know, I chalked that up to COVID and the fact that a lot of things weren't available as much and completely understandable. It would have been the same, you know, here if I go to a restaurant. So that makes a lot of sense. But then when we started to see that it never really came back from that point. Uh, then I found, hmm, I definitely found that it was a little bit disappointing that the food in the main dining room in particular seemed to have slipped a little bit of a notch. And I found that across several cruise lines. So it's not to throw any cruise line under the bus. And it still is very good food. It's still food that if I went to any restaurant, I would still be happy with. It was not bad food. I just remembered it being sometimes extraordinary. And, um, I like extraordinary. I like feeling like it's a little bit special. But I have found over the last few months, we've done a few cruises with Princess, with Celebrity, Holland America, Royal Caribbean, even recently on a short four day cruise on Freedom. We found the food in the main dining room very good on all of the lines. Mm. And I think getting better from what we experienced a year ago. So I don't know if that was just my experience, but I hope that things are improving in, you know, a better direction for people. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I wonder if part of the food component, because I noticed it as soon as we went back, like things that, you know, like say, uh, even simple stuff like pizza at Sorrento's on Royal or, you know, it, it seemed like the quality had changed. Maybe the ingredients had changed. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe from a business perspective, okay, we have to cut costs somewhere. Maybe we use a less expensive ingredient than what used to be a premium ingredient. And then, of course, at the same time that we saw maybe some of the change in food quality, we've also seen uh, maybe even more specialty restaurants than some of the newer cruise ships oh, than there right. were in the past. So how, how do you follow, you know, I used to be really hardcore, like, I, you know, I'm never, unless it was like I was going to make a video about it or something, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm never eating at a specialty restaurant because I've already paid for more food than I can eat in a cruise. What am I doing eating at a specialty restaurant? But I find I really love the specialty restaurant experience. I love the intimacy of it, kind of the, you know, the higher food quality. What do you think? Where do you fall? Are, are, do you plan uh, for each of your cruises to maybe have some specialty dining or uh, do you try to just stick with the stuff that's included? No, I'm the same as you, Tony. I am. Um Definitely years ago, my husband and I used to say, why would we go to a specialty restaurant? The food is just as good in the main dining room. Then we made the mistake of trying, I think it was Sabatini's on Princess. And we're like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> so on Crown Girl as well on Princess. So then we would say like every cruise, we would usually plan one specialty restaurant. We usually had some amount of onboard credit. So it came from there and it did become something nice. We'd plan one, then it was two nights. So uh, we definitely haven't avoided specialty restaurants. And now we'll usually do, per seven day cruise, we'll do two specialty restaurants, sometimes three, if we add a spontaneous one. I don't mind it. I personally think there's a choice for people. Uh, some people, like you said, really enjoy the food aspect and the higher quality, even the more intimate atmosphere, we're, we're like that. And other people think the main dining room or the buffet or the casual grill or the pizza suits them. So I think there's choice for everybody. Yeah, I think that is the overarching story of cruising. There is something for everybody. Uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about changes in service level. The one that always comes to mind, and it, I don't even know if it's that big a deal, but most cruise lines used to have two, I would say, room steward touches on your cabin every day, whether it be a cleaning and a turn down. But normally there were two touches just to see how things are going. And then as we came back from the pandemic, almost every cruise line said, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to have one touch a day. And I don't know if that's indicative to a decline in service overall. You know, there still be there still could be some questions out there whether they're able to staff up even a couple years after the restart the same way that they did prior to the shutdown. But when you mentioned service quality, what are some touchstones or some spots where you've seen service maybe being decreased from before the shutdown? Yeah, so definitely, like you said, the housekeeping, although uh, something good, I think. I like twice a day housekeeping. I know it doesn't bother everybody to not have it, but for me, I find it's a little extra touch that we have on cruises that I just don't really want to let go of if I don't have to. So I like it. And because we cruised with our kids when they were young and we were four people in a cabin, it allowed the beds that were Pullman beds or a sofa bed to be put away during mm -hmm. the day. So it still felt like a really nice usable space. So to me, I really feel like people that are four in a cabin should have a, a twice a day just for that service. But anyway, um, outside of that, I find it's um, the servers in the main dining room. And it's not because I don't think I have good enough service. I do. I feel badly for the waiters and the servers that look like they are just so busy and they are working so hard. So for me, it's that. I uh, There and also bartenders, servers, you know, around the pool. There's less servers around the pool uh, on most of the cruises that we've been on and to me again it's just that these people seem to be working so hard so i wish there were more people not only to serve guests but also to alleviate some of the potential stress that um that the employees have yeah it's it's an amazingly hard job when you start to when you start to calculate how many hours these folks work and how many days in a row without a day off and um, it really blows my mind when I see people, you know, get upset with crew. I mean, you know, look, we, we all pay for our crews and we would like the value for, you know, what we paid. 
But, you know, I think there's a right and a way, wrong way to do things. And certainly yelling at a crew member always feels weird to me when you see it. Uh, yeah, I completely, I completely connect with you on this idea that it does seem like these guys are working. They already worked really hard in the, you know, prior to the shutdown. And now they're working even even at, at a different kind of level. And, and but we, I think we do end up with a little less service because of that. Uh, yeah. Just before it slips my mind, uh, I love this idea of four people cruising in a cabin. I've never <laughs> done that. And so have you ever made a, a video on like, what are tips for four people cruising in a cabin? I have not, but I have thought about making some videos about um, sort of that would be helpful to families that are cruising um, together because I don't really have that and I don't see a lot of that content uh, yet like online um, on YouTube in particular and I do think really there are so many parents and children that are cruising together but four people even adults in a cabin uh, that definitely would be something good. I'm here for that content. I don't. I don't know that I would ever cruise with four people, but <laughs> now I just want to know, like, what's the you know what's the shower schedule and like how do you get the beds out of the way so that you can get to your balcony? That kind of thing. that's it's it's a uh, it's fascinating. Now I know that you have a lot of great interaction with your audience and a lot of great interaction with your community, and so I'm sure you've had a lot of feedback on this. And I don't know. I'll ask you this question before we get to the second question. Uh, do do you run into a lot of people on cruise ships that know you because of the content that you create? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, well, usually on most cruises we do. It's it's For me, it's a lot of fun, though. I don't know, maybe the novelty just hasn't worn off yet. Like if people say hello and they, you know, they recognize me, I have not met one person uh, who has not been nice. So that's been a good thing. And uh, yeah, so and sometimes crew members, which is really funny to me, too. I never think of crew members recognizing me. But some people say that they watch my videos. Some people tell me that they've watched my videos uh, before they started to work on a cruise ship. And uh, so I've had a couple of hugs from crew members. That's really nice. I, yeah, I've, I've met a lot of crew members that watch during the pandemic and uh, I can some imagine. of the kindest things that have ever been said to me came from crew members. And I've, ha I've met uh, a ton more wonderful people and I've got one or two fun <laughs> stories, but I love life. I love life about the fun stories, but I do like it. But I wanted to ask you this in relation to that. Have you found yourself that you're the de facto complaint department, de facto guest services department from people that you run into on a cruise? Because I get that all the time. Yes and no. Rarely. It does happen sometimes where somebody will say, you know what, you know, and I'm like, you know, have you brought that up to guest services? That is such a good point. And uh, then they're like, well, I did and this didn't happen. But, you know, then I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> um, so not more than that. Uh, most of the time, uh, most of the time, not that much. I did have one time somebody... Uh, Anyway, a very, very nice lady, super, super nice. But I was at the bar, um, a martini bar on a celebrity ship, and I was talking to somebody, and out of the corner of my eye, I could see somebody getting, like, very, like, you know, like, and really almost hyperventilating, but, like, very... And then, I, like, I looked over, she's like, oh, my God, you're Alana, you're Alana. And then I'm like, yeah, I yeah, am, nice to meet you. And then she said something, and before I could stop her, she said... Oh my God, can I pinch you? And before I could say no, she pinched me. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I've, yeah, I've been... I've... <laughs> I've been handled a few times. I've been, yeah, it's, it's unexpected. And, but you know, it's, it's so weird because, you know, I'm sure you're like, like me, it's like, you just feel very grateful that somebody connects with what you're doing and the Absolutely. fact that they connect with what you're doing. That's why we get to have those kind of encounters. And like you said, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of those interactions are to the moon, like just really amazing. But I, I do get it a lot. Like I do look like, <laughs> I feel like I have a sign on some like, Hey, what's your complaint today? Day. And uh, yeah. but it, well, it's kind of funny. So you do cruise news more than I share a be. lot of cruise tips. So most of the time yeah. when people, yeah, like I'll hear people will like, they'll stop me and they're like, I have my magnets. 
That's what they'll tell me. So maybe maybe that's why. I get a little bit it of could be, It could be. It could be. I mean, I've had people say, hey, can you, you know, you know, burn this place to the ground on your show for me. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not really what I do. But, but you know, I do. Oh, I yeah. do. <laughs> you know, I did that. One guy did complain one time. I was on an NCL ship and he said that there was some dude just standing outside the haven looking in at people. He said it was super awkward. <laughs> But I told him, I told him, I think, yeah, I told him I could, I could fix that. So that, but again, but so with that in mind, people talking to you on cruise ships, the audience and the people that you interact with in your community, what, what are people upset about these days? What are you finding to be the top complaints that people have on cruise ships uh, out there right now in 2024? I hear a lot of complaints about the pricing. I think probably you do too. That definitely is from uh, from loyal cruisers. Definitely the pricing. Um, beyond that, a little bit the service, a little bit frustrations about the service. Um, not bad customer service, just that they would like to see more um, more staffing on the cruise ships, and uh, definitely some of the communication um, from the cruise lines to cruise passengers. I've also heard that, especially recently, but um, that definitely is something. Mm. Yourself? Yeah. That, well, yeah, I would say that the pricing is the tough thing. And to me, it's just it's just simple you know, economics, right? The businesses, they're going to claim as much of our disposable income as possible. And it doesn't always feel good, right? Because we're used to, you know, we had cruising at a certain level before the shutdown. And then cruising was really cheap after the shutdown because they wanted to get people back on the ships and these crazy configurations of, you know, protocols and testing and all that stuff. That wasn't an easy hurdle for everybody and so that you know they you could do it at a very decent price but now that we're at a time where cruising is growing again by the millions and there's new cruisers coming in and it's so easy to replace maybe a small percentage of disgruntled older cruisers or seasoned cruisers yeah they're they're getting you know i keep looking i really would like to go on icon of the seas but i just i can't imagine i would ever pay six thousand dollars per person for an interior cabin it just it just blows my mind that you know now we look at royals sometimes like we used to look at disney where you would say i could go on a regular royal or a carnival or anything for two disneys and uh so i i get that a lot and then i, I get the right. service level i get the service level a lot but you know to me the the core of cruising is still there right you still have a you still have rooms and you, you know you have your lodging and you have a lot of included food and you've got the entertainment and you've got the comedy and i still believe that it's a better value than what you can get on land and then i still think it's an amazing opportunity for people that you know it, whatever it is in the united states so many of us are brought up not to travel internationally i do feel like it is a, a way for people to go out and see other places in the world so i don't know i of course i'm just a big fanboy for cruising and I, I love it completely but uh i you know it's the it's the ebb and flow and of course when you're used to nobody likes change or when you're used to the way things were then change is going to be painful i would i would guess what are some of the positive things that you're hearing people say out there about cruising have you had people hit you up with there just some great cruise experiences yeah absolutely and that is one thing that i did want to mention and it was something that i noticed that we were on a cruise this summer and for whatever reason, I, my eyes just opened to it that every person I spoke to on the cruise ship told me how great it was. And it was new cruisers, experienced cruisers. And since then, I've been on cruises and sometimes I'll ask people, how's your cruise going? And even recently, we were on Celebrity on the Ascent. Of course, it's a new ship. People's experiences were fantastic. So even though... Um, you know, some people might say online, like, oh, the food quality has gone down on Celebrity. I think every single person I spoke to was having a great time, thought the food was fabulous. Um, you know, and maybe things weren't 100% perfect, but they were having such a good time and enjoying it. And the same thing even on our four-day four cruise on um, the Freedom of the Seas. Likewise, I spoke to experienced cruisers who just enjoy that cruise ship despite the fact that that it's an older cruise ship, they really love it. And then I spoke to new cruisers who were loving their first cruise experience and they wanted to do other ones. So I do think it's important to remember that some of the um, negativity and even complaints that we see online, it's an opportunity to vent when it's on YouTube or even on Facebook. But I think 
like you said, to your point, cruising still, I don't think it's lost any of its charm. I think it's still a really good value. Maybe not Icon of the Seas for every sailing, but overall, there are still some deals to be had. So I still think it's very positive. So speaking of Icon of the Seas, where do you fall on um, mega cruise ship? Do you have a preferred size of cruise ship? Um, I think overall, I do prefer a mid to what I would consider large cruise ship, so rather than mega. So anywhere from the size of Rotterdam, um, Holland America, or even Celebrity Summit. So that's in that sort of just around 100,000 tons, which nowadays is mid-size. You know, if, if we were in 2012, <laughs> that would be large. Um, but that size to about 160,000 tons to like about maybe a Norwegian Joy size. That probably is <laughs> in my... In, you know, in my preference. That being said, we did our first Oasis of the Seas cruise back in 2012. I didn't 100% love it. It felt a little bit too big for me at that time. And then we went back on it in, I think it was 2021 or 22, I can't remember. And the second time on, I guess I already knew what to expect, you know, in a large ship and I absolutely loved it. So I think they're both great, but in terms of entertainment, um, all the details being able to walk around that cruise ship and seeing so much the different places that we could eat both casually and you know finer dining i love that also i don't know i think it does depend what type of vacation that you want for just the ship alone i really love a mega ship and for um, a combination of a relaxing cruise experience and destination i think i prefer a mid-size ship yeah, it's, it's a tough one because I think Oasis of the Seas is probably still my favorite cruise ship. And, you know, there's so much I'm not going to use. I'm not going to climb the rock wall. I'm not going to zip line. I'm not going to use the water slides. But I am going to sit in Central Park and listen to music at night. I am going to go to the Broadway show. I am going to go to the ice skating rink. So it's such a wild thing that sometimes to get that kind of stuff, you have to have the other stuff. But, You're right. um, but then you also mentioned the Rotterdam. And I spent a lot of time on that ship last year across the Atlantic on that ship. And it was it was wonderful. So it's, you know, the, the beautiful thing about cruising and I believe the cruise lines will continue to build in all different sizes. Uh, the beautiful thing about cruising is that those options are there. You, you mentioned relaxing a couple times. And of course, you know what we do these days, most of the time we require the Internet while we're cruising. But imagine you weren't a content creator. Imagine you weren't keeping up and with everything that you're keeping up with. Were you somebody who would uh, not get the Internet? Would you lock your phone in the safe? Is Would you go that level of relaxing or were you always trying to, st I'm always trying to stay connected. Were you always trying to stay connected? Um, I didn't go as far as locking my phone in the safe, uh, but I did not buy the package. I definitely, I wouldn't have considered myself like a really frugal cruiser because I definitely spent on a little bit of things. But to me, the internet itself seemed like such a big extra expense that we would just get a plan that we could use, you know, on the islands. And then I would just use the internet there. And if I really needed to keep in touch, maybe I would use a few minutes. You know, sometimes the cruise lines used to have, you know, 150 minutes that you would get with a certain amount of loyalty points or something. So I would be like on and off, you know, just check the yeah. email. Um, even if I was posting something on Instagram, this is early. This is like in 2018, I started, <clears throat> excuse me, I started my blog. So I um Anyway, I still didn't buy the internet at the time, but I still wanted to post a little bit. So I would write out my entire post in my notes in my um, on my iPhone. And then I had a certain amount of minutes that either I purchased or I got from loyalty. And then I would go right onto Instagram and I'd post it, copying <laughs> and pasting it from, you know, my notes. And then I'd be off. I was like, so I didn't want to spend a dollar on the internet if I could help it. But times have changed and this is a business. So... I do. It is the wildest thing. Like, you know, I, I worked in IT for most of my professional career and I've always been used to having real high speed internet. And so now I'm in, I'm in endeavored in this activity that even like today, if I go on a cruise ship, I still have some question whether or not I'm going to be able to use the internet in a normal way. Like it feels like pre 2000 sometimes on a cruise ship, like the pictures just like, 
you know, it's like, oh, nothing's connecting. But, you know, I think of things that are overpriced on a cruise ship. And I don't think it may not be fair to say that things are overpriced. But like pictures, to me, the the, the upcharge for a printed picture is just crazy. That's why they're able to print mm -hmm. so many and throw them away. But I was figuring it out. I think the Internet's like... I don't know, 115 times more expensive on a cruise ship than what you would pay for a day on land or something like that. So it, it hurts me every time, the fact that I need it, that I have to pay that exorbitant price. But um, I, I love, you know, yeah, it, you're right. I guess it's the world we're in. I, I love staying connected and uh, that kind of thing. What's your, do you have a favorite cruise port that you like to leave from? I think just to leave from, it is probably um, Fort Lauderdale, Port Everglades. I just, I find it so much easier than Miami. Oh my God, Miami, like, I feel like I have to leave an hour before, <sighs> even if I'm very close to the, like, to the cruise port. Uh, it, I find Miami is a hassle. Uh, sorry to Miami cruise port, but, um, <laughs> so I find Fort Lauderdale just easier. I like that. We did Port Canaveral several years ago, so it's been so long, but I liked that cruise port. And I like... Cape Liberty in uh, New Jersey because mm. where we live um, so we live in Montreal and we can drive to New York in about six hours so uh, for us in the summertime we really enjoy during doing Bermuda cruises and this way we can drive over to New Jersey and we can take a cruise right out of there we could park right there it's less expensive for parking than it is in Manhattan to go on one of the Norwegian ships um, so we really like that. And it's usually pretty easy. There's usually, you know, one ship that's in at a time uh, to get, you know, on on embarkation day. So it's pretty easy. So I like that, too. I haven't been out of Cape Liberty yet. I was fortunate last year to go out of the Manhattan Terminal and then I went out of the Brooklyn Terminal. And, man, that's a... Uh. That's an amazing sail away just to be able to sail out of, of New York and under the bridges yeah, there. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, Miami. So Miami's. A, I live in I live on the west coast of Florida, just north of Tampa. And so right. I can get to five different Floridian cruise ports within five hours. But the drive to Miami is annoying. And then trying to navigate the port is annoying. I think the sail away is pretty. It's neat when there's other ships there and then the sail out past South Beach. But it is not, you know, Tampa is the easiest for me, and then Port Canaveral is pretty easy. But when you're in Fort Lauderdale, do you stay on the uh, Dania Beach side, or do you stay on the other side, the port side? So I have family in that area. So oh. my parents are actually snowbirds. So oftentimes we'll try to go even a couple of weeks before a cruise. Um, if it's during the winter, we try to do a little bit of a winter break. And because we do this job like you now, we can work anywhere so we'll spend a little bit of time and we stay north of um fort lauderdale sort of in the area of boynton beach delray boca deerfield beach that whole area uh so i tend to stay there rather than in fort lauderdale but there's a couple times if we're flying into a cruise then we'll stay um either at fort lauderdale beach um if we spend a couple of days there just to add to the holiday aspect or yeah. we will stay uh, right near the cruise terminal. I like the Hilton, um, Hilton Fort Lauderdale Marina. I just yeah. love seeing those boats um, come in. And I like some of the restaurants that are right there along the intercoastal, even taking the water taxi into Fort Lauderdale. Um, I like that. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful port. I, there's a lot of, you know, it's it's interesting. There's just a lot to do in Fort Lauderdale. So uh, very cool. Yeah, I love I'll Fort put you on Lauderdale. the spot for one last question. Uh, sure. How do you answer the question when somebody says, what's your favorite cruise line? Um, I don't have a favorite cruise line. Um, no, I, I pretty much don't. Hmm. So I don't really answer that because really the truth is there are so many good cruise lines and it does depend what type of vacation that I want. But I will be honest, and there are some cruise lines that suit us a little bit more at the stage in life that we're in right now and what we prefer to do on a cruise. So did you want to I'll know what my, my, my favorite cruise lines are? I was, well, yeah, <laughs> tell me, so if you had to pick three, I'll, I'll tell you my cheat answer real quick. Yeah, the easiest can. answer to that question is uh, the next one. What's your favorite yes. cruise line? The next one. So that's yeah. that's the easiest one. But if, if if they were gonna, if you had to pick three and you could only cruise three for the rest of your life, what do, what would it be? Uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna. Answer. <laughs> really? Um, not even three. Like, three. 
Well, because that is hard, though, right? Because if I really had to, you know, maybe I would say, um, honestly, right now, I love Holland America. I think that we're going through a phase right now that um, we're oftentimes so busy. And Holland America, I truly feel like I really relax on their cruises. I even love the fact that, you know, people talk about chair hogs all the time. Um, I can always get a chair in the sun on a Holland America ship. Always, always, always. I think that maybe because of the demographic, not everybody wants to sit out on a chair in the sun. But I'm from Canada, so I want to. <laughs> um, so I really like that, and I like the food. But I do really, I love Royal Caribbean. I still think that their entertainment is um, is phenomenal. I love Princess. I think Princess is such a good value. Um, with Princess Plus and Princess Premier and for everything that you get. I find uh, Princess, we actually did a multi-generational cruise a few years ago. It was my parents' 50th anniversary. And, you know, we did with um, the youngest in the family was seven and the oldest was 77. Everybody had a good time. So uh, I love Princess. I love Celebrity. I love Norwegian Cruise Line also. So... Yeah, so if we didn't mention it, let's, we'll, we'll get ourselves off the hook here. We love all the cruise lines. This is just a this is just a hypothetical. Uh, if, if we didn't mention your cruise line, don't be upset. We we love them all. We're happy to try them all. But yes, uh, yeah. but no, hey, thank you so much for <laughs> taking this time. Such a pleasure to talk to you today. I would implore you guys out there if you if you haven't yet, please go check out Life Well Cruised on YouTube and on the internet, the LifeWellCruise.com. Uh, a lot. Thank you so much for taking this time. It was really great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Wow. There you go. What an interesting conversation. What a wealth of information. Uh, hot cruise fire. Hot fire. Yeah, that was a great conversation. I'm sure many of you already do this, but if you're one of the few who doesn't, make sure you go and check out Life Well Cruised on YouTube. Big thanks for everybody for watching the podcast today. I would love to hear your feedback if you'd like to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to hear the audio version of this, the audio version of the podcast, we're on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe for more. This is Tony for the La Lida Loca Cruise podcast. And until the next time, We'll see you on the Lido. Bye.